Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was thinking about as we were worshiping when it said courage are you courageous do you feel courage i feel courageous that's a good feeling to have so as i was, as we were singing that's exactly what i was thinking i was thinking i feel courageous i think our um, fellowship with the lord brings us even you know more into that how can you you know what do you need to have courage for um I think um, sometimes when I think about courage, you know, we look at David and Goliath and we look at uh, different people in the Bible who w had to come against adversity and war, you know, and so that kind of, cur I'm not very courageous if you, if you told me I had to pick up a gun and go to war. I don't, I don't know that I would be very courageous in that. Yeah, yeah, Tanya, you either, right? Right. So we think of courage. So as we, you know, when a lot of times, I don't know if you do this, but when we, when we, when Lori leads us in worship, when the worship team leads us in worship, and we're we're singing, what do those songs mean to you? You know, it, they should mean something to you. They should stir up inside you faithfulness, right? We sing about faithfulness. We sing about love. We sing about mercy. And so um, I think. Sometimes, the, probably for the most of us, when I talk about courage, the courage to tell somebody the truth when they need to hear the truth, and it's not necessarily an easy thing to say. So when I, in that instance, I do have to gather the courage and know, but of course that always still comes from the Lord, amen? So today, um, and in... And it tails off of my last message, and it tails that before that. That was something that David had brought as well into it. And we're going to talk about temptation. And um, temptation is no longer a problem. Should, it shouldn't be, right? Temptation is no longer a problem. So, but again, that word temptation might mean something different to each one of us. I'm not talking about cookies, okay? I'm not... <sighs> Not talking about sugar, not talking about coffee, right? But, but in a way, I am. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13 in the New King James says, No temptation has overtaken you, such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with this temptation will also make the way of, but with the temptation, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And so within this scripture, no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. So we're not talking about that we have to rise to what Jesus, he's, this scripture, you know, we know that Jesus talks about it, the devil came and he tempted him. How many days? Forty. 
And so we're not, and that's why, but this scripture is talking about no temptation has overtaken you except as is common to man. So what are temptations that are common to man? So then we can think about, you know, sugar and different things. But um, wherever there is temptation, he'll always make a way to escape it as well. Let's turn over to Romans 8.12, and I'm going to be reading this out of the New Living Translation. Romans 8.12. I would still like to turn to New King James, even though I'm reading out of something else. So at the title, uh, the heading above verse 12, it says, Sonship Through the Spirit. And so this, this is my continuation of when I was talking about the law, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And how um, when we receive the Holy Spirit into our life and when we listen to the Holy Spirit, um, we have an avenue that other people don't have. It's not just knowing God, but it's about, you know, utilizing that power within us. And so when it said in 1 Corinthians, but the temptation will also make a way of escape, that's really the Holy Spirit will always tell you ahead of time, you are fixing to get yourself in hot water, right? And so then you have to have the courage to listen. So that's where I think about courage sometimes, or the common sense I think sometimes common sense and courage don't always go hand in hand, and I think they should more often. It says, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. You have no obligation to give in to temptation. Eve didn't have to do it, right? Eve didn't have to do it. Adam didn't have to do it either. And so, um, but we have no obligation. Once we receive the power of the Holy Spirit in our life, and it's an operation in our life, we are no longer under the obligation to listen to the enemy. In fact, when he speaks, you can just ignore him. For if you live by its dictates, it says you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own child, children. So now we call him Abba Father. For the spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. So there was a footnote in the Life Application Study Bible when I was studying on this. And uh, in verse 13, it says, when we turn away from sin's appeal... In the Holy Spirit's power regarding sin as dead, we can ignore temptation when it comes our way. And so, um, have you ever been in a situation, and it can be really varied here, and you just, you automatically just go, oh, Jesus. Right? I mean, you're reaching, you're like, whoo. And, and you know, and so that's where we do. We have, sometimes you do have to invoke the power of that. You have to call upon his name. And, and so within that, we know that with the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus will immediately redirect us that direction. And so when we were worshiping and we said nothing, right? The power of his name when we call upon him. And so um, it breaks chains, it brings us to that point. In, back in verse 15 where it said, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. You know, we're no longer a slave to sin. We're no longer a slave to the power. And, and I think a lot of times, and um, we were talking about this morning, and I'll, I'll, I will definitely get the information and bring it to church on next Sunday, um, about um, overcomers. So when we are trying to overcome something in our life, for each one of us, it's always going to be something different. And hopefully you have something to draw from. So we have something that we used to do that we no longer do. How did we get there? So sometimes you have to tap back into that. But a lot of times how you got there from that situation isn't going to help you 
in the situation you have now. It, li it just really is standing up and saying, I am a child of God. I am not going to give in to temptation. Temptation has no hold of, over me. This does not have any hold over me. But it's not even necessarily saying it. It's just knowing it and it just being so. And that's where I think courage, when I, when I, that word just keeps coming back to me today. Um, 2 Corinthians one twenty one. And again, in the New Living Translation, it says, um, it is God who enables us, along with you, to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us, and he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees he has promised us. And so I'm going to reread that. It is God who enables us, along with you, and so if you look at what Paul is, who Paul is speaking to here, let me scoot over in the New King James. Um, it, um, 21, 21, sealed us. So there's a, a note in the, in the Spiritful Life Bible that says, God has marked us as belonging to him. The Holy Spirit himself serves as a guarantee or a pledge in the Greek of God's commitment to complete his work in us. And so um, I've seen it several times. Um, God's not finished with the story. Quit taking the pen away from him. Right? You know, let him, let him continue to perfect that which concerns us. And um, I get in more trouble when I'm trying to do stuff on my own instead of really relying on the peace and the presence of God in every situation. I have a couple situations, um, I think emotional drama, probably, I think for all age groups, emotional drama is probably one of the hardest things for us to stay in peace with when there is emotional drama. So it may be a family member, it might be somebody um, that isn't, um, that's very close to you that just, isn't using common sense, isn't listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, and so, and, and when you're really close to those people, you can carry that emotion around with you. It can be disheartening, it can bring anger, it can bring disappointment. Um, and so in, in that instance, um, I really got, I, I just have to tap into God on that and say, Lord, I need to not focus on this. I need this to not overwhelm me. I need to have peace in the situation. Because there's not peace in the situation, right? And when you can't resolve what somebody else is doing that's affecting your love walk, <laughs> your, your emotional peace walk, um, that's a very difficult place to be. And so that is the one time when I really do have to tap into it um, and really talk to God about it. I think... Um, don't be afraid if you have to step back. That's right. So Fonda said, don't be afraid if you have to step back. Well, chances are you do. Right. Ch because that's what... Because we're, we're, we're going to try to help fix it. And it is okay. It doesn't make you feel any better, though. It is. It's okay. And I think the older we get, um, the more examples I think we have of those situations in our life. And again, it goes back to the fact, though, that it doesn't matter. I mean, I can use situations with um, mom and dad and choices they made or didn't make. Um, my mom and dad, not David's. David's, too. We can throw them in the bucket. Um, my children... My children, my grandchildren, you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on on different emotional levels with family members right now that um, I'm really asking God to intervene in the situation. But, you know, if they're not serving the Lord, where's my faith in that? Right? Where is my faith in that? I'm, and I'm not, I'm putting that out there to you because a lot of times we realize that... Um, God needs, to, God needs to work on them. He's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can do it. But I'll always ask them, what can I do? 
what can I do, Lord? And I think being forever, being present, right? Just having the Lord present with me, just having the Holy Spirit present with me in those situations um, and getting to that place of peace and that place of joy in my own life um, will help me to weather the storm, right? Hallelujah. So it is God who enables us, along with you, to stand. And so in the New King James, it says, Now he, capital H, who establishes us with you in Christ, has anointed us, and has anointed us is God. And so God has anointed us to be able to do what we are talking about right now. Verse 22, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. And so I like how the New Living Translation says it because <clears throat> it says that his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment. So that means there's more to come. Just the first installment, right, that he's promised to us. And so um, what else is what else do you need in this situation? Um, the Holy Spirit guarantees that we belong to God and we will receive all his benefits, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. The Holy Spirit guarantees that salvation is ours and that we will receive so much more when Christ returns. The great comfort and the power of the Holy Spirit gives in this life is just a foretaste or a down payment, the first installment, as it said there, of the benefits of the eternal life in God's presence. With the privilege belonging to God, it, with, with the privilege of belonging to God comes the responsibility of identifying ourselves as faithful servants, being faithful to share who God is. Amen? To represent him as being faithful. If he's faithful to us, are we faithful to him? And um, there's a note here, don't be ashamed to let others know that you are his. Um, David and I talk about this a lot. I, I think he tells way too many people that he's a pastor all the time. He's like, yep, I'm a pastor and I serve, I mean, just, just total strangers. We'll be sitting somewhere, you know, and I'll be like, I go get my hair done. I don't tell them I'm a minister. Now, am I ashamed? No, I'm not. It's just how I handle stuff. But it also has to be okay for David to handle it the way he wants to, too. So, because it really bothers me. I don't know why it really bothers me. I guess because I'm with him now, they're like, they know. Like, oh, now I'm uncovered. <laughs> right? It's probably what it is. And so, I, I think as we identify ourselves as Christians, um, how each one of us handles that should, is, is going to be different. And, 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 but, but we still need to make sure that people know that we are his. And it should be through our actions. Amen? I mean, you should just, people should just know that you're different. Or that you're okay. Typically, in my Holy Spirit, and I've talked about this before, our, the Holy Spirit, when people have the Holy Spirit in their lives, and we, I interact with a stranger as the Holy Spirit, they interact with each other in the spirit realm. And so your spirit and their spirit touch. And there is, there's just something about people, right? You meet people and there's just something about them. You just like them. You don't know, have like a big conversation. You just like them. And I immediately know that they're Christians. Immediately know. Um, I was shared that when I was very young, very young in the Lord, very young in the ministry, very young in being married. And I was at the airport, and I've shared this before. And I go into a toy store at the Air Sacramento airport. So it was a long time ago. And um, the lady in the toy store, where I'm just, I don't know what I was even looking at or who I was looking at it for. And she just walked up and she said, are you a Christian? I said, I am. She goes, I knew that. My spirit told me. She goes, I immediately, you walked in the door, you didn't even say a word to me. And I immediately was drawn to you. And um, I have used that same analogy time and time and time again. Also can tell the difference when it's the opposite of that when somebody is in operation of demonic influences, um, doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, doesn't believe in God. There's a lot of people out there. Um, 
that um, don't have our best interest at heart, just in our daily lives, you know, even if it's all about them. Turn over to Ephesians 4.28. I never want to bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit. And this is what the scripture is going to be talking about by the way I live. Um, Paul warns us, warn, warns us against um, our language, bitterness, improper use of anger, harsh words, slander, bad attitudes, right? Don't have a bad attitude. So Ephesians 4, 28 through 32 says, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work and give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. 30, and do not, and I highlighted this, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he's identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And it is these one, two, three, the five scriptures here in Ephesians that guide me in my everyday life. Making this my, this is what I always achieve. I never want to have bitterness in me. I know what bitterness feels like. I know when I'm bitter uh, about something that's been done to me or somebody I love or a situation, um, usually because of disappointment, expectations not met, right? So that's what disappointment is, is unmet met expectations. Um, not being angry. Anger doesn't feel good. Last time I was angry at somebody, I mean, it just, it, it's, it's just a pit within you, and it will take you to a pit you don't want to go. Harsh words and slander, as well as any type of evil behavior. But forgiveness, and um, David talked about this as what, in his last message, um, about when we forgive people, we're forgiving people for us, right? You forgive you need to forgive. They may not even want you to forgive them, but you have to be able to get to that place. Otherwise, that's where all this other stuff comes in, and that's where the peace of God leaves. Is God's peace still there and available to you? It is, but it, it can't operate. Peace can't operate when you're angry. Love can't operate when you're mad. Um, I love when people are being ugly that I can just go, whoa, gee, Lord, what's up with them? Not, and not internalize it and take it in in my own life. And it's, it's a gift that God has given me and one I have to reuse. I, you know, it's not, like, it's not like I'm standing up here and saying I've got all this, but I'm saying I've been there and I've done it and I know that it works and so I want to get back there. And so, um, instead, it says in verse 32, be kind to each other, tender-hearted. And so, being tender-hearted, um, I never want to. I don't want to be hard-hearted. The things of this world, we don't. You don't ever want to be that way. You, you, and that's where when it says we're not subject to it, isn't that good? I mean, just in the first scripture that I had. We had looked at, no temptation has overtaken you as such as common men, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. I take this and that, this is, the, this is the, being tempted to be angry, being tempted to be bitter, being temp tempted to be hard-hearted. This is where, when I talk about temptation, this is what I'm focusing on. Because I realize that I'm, I am not subject to it that he's provided a way of escape for me in it. And so I immediately am diving in and activating that. So I said, we can bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit by the way we live. And Paul warns them here, warns us against, um, in the scriptures that we read. In verse 30, the Holy Spirit within us is a guarantee that um, 
we can tap into and not be subject to the things that are the enemy's trying to put upon us. Christ's law, verse 32, of forgiveness as taught in the Gospels, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, 18 and 35, Mark eleven twenty five. 25. We also see it in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Luke eleven four. 4. God forgives us not because we forgive others, but solely because of his great mercy. Be a merciful. God forgives us not because we forgive others, but solely because of his great mercy. Having received forgiveness, we will pass it on to others. I always say, way too many times recently it seems like, um, you know, it's not all about me. Um, when, when things are happening in people's life and we're like, what did I do? Well, you may not have done anything, so why are you, why, why is it all about you? Half the stuff that is happening in the world has absolutely nothing to do with us. We just feel the um, reflection, is the word I want to use, of it because things are so close to us. Act in love towards your brothers and sisters in Christ just as God acted in love by sending his son to die for your sins. As we or I come to understand his mercy, we want to be like him. Mercy is a hard thing to give sometimes. You know, we, I'm like, well, it was easy for Jesus. Well, it wasn't easy for Jesus, right? God, God, I think it's easy for, because God always is thinking of us first, isn't he? And so when we're doing the same thing, when we're thinking of others first, um, that's when we engage mercy. And when we start engaging mercy because we're being thoughtful to somebody's situation, even, even if it's their own fault, right? Um, we're praying for them. It feels different. Mercy Real mercy, when you give mercy to people, you, you can't be angry with them. You can't be bitter. You can't say harsh words about them or to them about that because mercy within us, I think, is really our strongest weapon against temptation in the areas that I'm talking about here as well. Matthew 6, 13 in the New King James... And do not lead us into temptation, right? But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Right? So let me back up. So um, in Matthew 16, 13, when Jesus said, Jesus came up into, I'm going to make sure I'm in the right scripture. Um, when Jesus came into the region of, of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that, that I am? I am the son of man, I am. Oh, I have to say that again. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? am <laughs> and so um here when you go through this and it's about jesus confesses i mean peter confesses jesus as the christ um but when the scripture that said and so i i have a, i had a missed scripture here so that's why I'm, I'm rolling backwards here but do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever so again in the lord's prayer when we're talking about that and we and we say that um we know that you know god 
would never leave. I, it's, it, every, time I say the, every time I say the scripture and I say the prayer, um, don't lead me into temptation, it's, God's not going to be leading us into temptation, right? And so sometimes I, I, have, I have to remember that he's delivering me from temptation. Um, God sometimes allows us to be tested when we're being, so if we're being, you know, because God knows stuff, right? So he knows what you're thinking, does he? Do you think he does? Does the word say he does? Well, he says he knows everything. He says he knows everything. So if he knows what you're thinking, oh my, right? <laughs> so sometimes I'll just sit there and go, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> I just, I'll think something and I'll, I'll think it in my brain. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord, you mean that, you know. And, uh, but, but if, if there is something that stands before us, he will allow us to know that we are more than conquerors in that situation as well. So he will use temptation. He doesn't give it to you, right? Um, <clears throat> as the disciples, as, his, as disciples, right, we should pray to be delivered from these trying times and for deliverance from Satan, who is the evil one, and his deceit. All Christians struggle with temptation uh, in some form or another. And it could be sugar now. We'll just throw that one out there. Sometimes it's so subtle that we don't even realize that it's happening to us until we're all in. God has promised that he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. Does that mean you have to go through the whole struggle? No, it means he's letting you know ahead of time at some point. You can stop now. You don't need to keep going <laughs> that direction. And you can choose to ignore him. And if you're going to keep walking it and then say, well, God won't give me more than I can bear, because I've heard, I hear people say it all the time. And I'll be like, well, who gave it to you? Did he give that to you? Did Satan give it to you? And now you're an operation of something in your life? Um, so we're not talking, you know, because that's a different temptation level there than what God is doing. He's using you, uh, or he's allowing, he's allowing us to be tested. Ask God to help you recognize temptation and give you the strength to overcome it, is my message for you today. And choose God's way instead. Mark fourteen thirty six. In the New King James says, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but you, what you will. So I'm going to guarantee you, this is something Jesus was dealing with, and this is something he's not, he's not asking you to do in these situations, to be a martyr for that. And here, this is, this is a place when people use that scripture because it says, verse 38, right? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Well, the temptation here was what? To go to sleep because he was tired. And so sometimes, and when I asked the Lord, I said, why did you, why did you put this scripture in this message? What, what is it that I'm supposed to share with you in relationship to this? And so I guess if we read it all the way through, it says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And so when you're sick and tired, or you're tired and sick, or you're tired of a situation, or you're physically sick, or you're physically challenged, or you are tired, sleep deprived, I mean physically sleep deprived, emotionally, spiritually deprived, that's when our flesh can be very weak. And so, but you, you have a guarantee of it. So this is where you do need to kind of step up and get your flesh stronger, right? We need to take care of ourselves. We need to be good to ourselves. We need to walk away from a situation so that we can obtain peace and mercy and grace and step back into it if, the Lord, if that's what the Lord wants us to do. <clears throat> So I have a note here. You may, not be face, you may not face execution for your faith, but you will probably face many problems that wear you down. You deal with irritating people whom you must love and serve. You face the burden of unfinished tasks and lack of obvious results. 
You cope with helpers who let you down or fail to even comprehend what you're trying to do. But keep watch, verse 1434 says. Stay awake and be morally vigilant. Vigilant. Pray, verse 35, pray to God. This is how you maintain your vigilance. Seek support of friends and loved ones. Um, 33, 14, 33, 37, 40, and 41 talk about it. Seek support of friends and loved ones. Reach out to someone. When you're getting, when, you, when you're, you're there, call someone up and talk to them. I don't care if you're embarrassed about it, right? Embarrassment's from the enemy. If you're embarrassed to call somebody, you probably need to call somebody because the enemy's got a foothold. Focus on the purpose God has given you in verse, so 1436, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. So, you know, in this case, he was given him a purpose, but it could be raising your children. It could be a coworker. It could be a spouse. It could be um, a decision. In, in each thing that we do, there is a purpose in it that God has given us. This is how you do God's will and not your own. So last scripture, uh, Luke 8, 13 and 14 in the New King James. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root who believe for a while in time of temptation, they will fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. So you might say, well, why is that my last scripture? <laughs> it's like breaks you into a whole new message. Your foundation is firm. Is it? I guess that's what you're going to have to ask yourselves at the end of this message. Where are you in this? Um, you know, it sounds good, you start out, but we're the ones on the rocks. So we're like, oh, the rock is Jesus, and we're standing firm, and this is not what this is talking about necessarily, but it's when you're hearers of the word and you're doers of the word and you receive the word with joy, um, but you don't have a foundation to fall back on, that's when we can be led into temptation. That's when we don't make good decisions. And so that's where with every scripture that is in this word I look at it and I go where am I in it sometimes my seed sowing parable here if you go through and so I I would encourage you this week look at Luke 8 let me turn back over there because where does it start the parable of the sower <laughs> Eleven, yeah. Um, so I and so when you look at the purpose, so go back to nine. It says, then his disciples asked him, saying, "What does this parable mean?" And he said, "To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables." So we're the disciples, right? So to you it's been given to know and to understand. It's not a mystery the kingdom of God and his ways. The, to the rest, it's given in parables, and it says, seeing, Jesus says, seeing that they may not see and hearing that they may not understand. So stay strong, stay vigilant, because even though we think that people should see stuff and you tell them stuff, you, you think that they should understand, they really may not. And that's where you really have to invoke the mercy and the grace of God. Amen? Amen. So the parable of the sower, though, is verse 11. Yep. And so as you go through and read this, and so if you don't have something you're reading this week, I would like to encourage you to read that. Look at the parable of the sower. Who are you today? Tomorrow, you could be somebody else. You know, some days you could be a little bit different. Um, you know, when thorns come up in your life, sometimes I think, uh, you know, well, here, I, I'm strong in the word, but I'm letting the cares of this world overtake me. And so then I've got to regroup and go back. And so I'm not saying that, you know, you're not perfect, but maybe you are.
but we're all working that direction, aren't we? Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Father, I just thank you that we are strong in you. I thank you that temptation is no longer a problem. That through this word, Father, if there is temptation that has overtaken anybody that's listening to this message, um, that they recognized it. You showed it to them the moment that they saw it. And I just ask this week, Father, that as we go through uh, the word, as we go through our day, that um, we will ask you to help us to remove that temptation. And if there's anything that we need to know or learn, that we know that you're faithful to just tell us about it, that we don't have to go through the situation to learn the lesson if we're obedient to listen to you. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you guide us, you direct us, that I am always mindful of you. Help us, Father, to strengthen our faith. Help us to grow in the Holy Spirit, to be led by him. Give us, a, give us a task. Give each and every one of us something that will strengthen us this week, Father. Help us to deliver a message to help someone that will strengthen within us to be mindful of your purpose this week in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Have a great week. Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that his plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the Word, we realize that the Word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we become begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that will be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and, or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry, realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.